Hi, welcome back to McNally's Musket Missive. I'm Harry McNally, and this is a musket. Today we're going to be talking about America's last smoothbore musket, the Model 1842. It's also the first percussion musket. Say goodbye to the rock bangers. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, well, it looks a lot like the previous Model 1840, you'd be exactly right. Except for the part where this is percussion and the last one was, uh, was, was rock banger, they're pretty much identical. Uh, I believe that the point of the 1840 was to give Springfield an opportunity to practice parts interchangeability. I forgot to mention this last episode, but the Model 1840 actually was the first fully parts interchangeable musket produced by the, by the U.S. Um, most people will say it's the Model 1842. The distinction being is that the Model 1842 was the first one produced at both national armories with interchangeable parts. Uh, that was put to the test on April 20th, 1854. Uh, Harpers Ferry suffered a flood, and the 9,000 1842s that they had on hand had to be completely disassembled, inspected, and cleaned. Um, as it was taken apart and cleaned, all the parts went into an individual bin. Screws here, lock plates there, hammers. And then reassembled from these bins, and they were able to reassemble all 9,000 from these bins using interchangeable parts. Now, the Model 1842, despite being the official service arm at the time of the Mexican War in 1847, uh, did not see service in that war. Uh, production of the new cartridges for the Model 1842 hadn't really uh, caught up with the, the, the demands of a war yet. Uh, there was less powder in the 1842 cartridges as opposed to the old rock banging uh, cartridges. The rock bangers needed a little bit of powder held in reserve from the cartridge to prime the pan for the ignition system. You don't need that with a, with a, with a, uh, per, with a percussion arm. They use a cap over this cone to make your, to make your bang. Um, so as a result, they didn't have enough ammunition for the new muskets to go to war with. And on top of that, I've heard that Winfield Scott didn't trust the new, the new, the uh, newfangled uh, percussion uh, mechanism. So as a result, these stayed home while the flintlocks had their one last hurrah. It's also noteworthy that this is the last Charleville derivative musket that the U.S. ever adopts. Uh, so let's get it over th to the light box, and I'll highlight, well, basically just the differences between this and the Model 1840. So, at first glance, the Model 1842 is just another Charleville derivative. It's pretty much identical to the Model 1840, as I said. Uh, the only difference being is that it is percussion. Uh, so, you know, same, uh, same barrel band, same side plate on the other side. Uh, moving into the lock, you can see the percussion mechanism on the bolster. Uh, no extraneous uh, bits on the lock plate from where a rock banging mechanism would go. This was... Uh, percussion from the beginning. Uh, going forward, same, same barrel bands as before. Uh, brass front sight, uh, flared uh, trumpet end of the ramrod, and you'll note that it protrudes slightly from the end of the barrel. That's because there's something in the barrel channel. That's not uncommon with these old muskets. Uh, to the other side, you know, same uh, L-shaped uh, side plate like on the Model 1842. Uh, back to the other side, here's a closer look at the bolster and the percussion cone. Uh, the way this would work, instead of banging rocks together to make sparks that would ignite uh, some uh, powder in the pan, uh, you've got a, a little metallic cap that would go over the end of the cone, uh, full of, uh, I think it's fulminate of mercury. It's, uh, it's an explosive unstable enough that will go off with a sharp uh, impact. Uh, that creates the... Uh, the flash that goes down into the bolster to ignite the, uh, the, the main powder charge inside of the barrel. Uh, we've got your standard uh, VP Eagle Head uh, proof marks and the uh, 1844 barrel date. Uh, the sharp eye among you will note that the uh, lock plate date was 1845 with a barrel date of 1844. That is also not uncommon. Um, they didn't make these parts, you know, at a one-to-one -one ratio. You'd have spare barrels, spare locks, and um, production run from one year would be used uh, the following year, so chances are this is an early 1845 production musket. Both armories produced the Model 1842 from 1844 to 1855. Uh, during that time, all the old rock-banging uh, muskets were converted to percussion, and uh, for all intents and purposes after that, um, a percussion musket was a percussion musket. Uh, the government really didn't differentiate, after the adoption of rifled muskets, any difference between a Model 1842 and a percussion conversion Model 1816. 
So the records aren't as qu quite clear as I'd like. Uh, starting in 1855, uh, the government um, converted 44,000 percussion muskets to include Model 1842s uh, into rifles. Uh, they rifled the barrels. Um, a new front sight was given to them. Uh, the ramrods were cupped so that they wouldn't deform the tip of the, uh, of the bullet when ramming uh, the cartridge. Um, and I've got some photos here, thanks to the good folks at the uh, U.S. Museum of National History. Um, just showing you, you know, the, the different front sights, the cupped, uh, the cupped ramrod. All right, we have this photograph from the Smithsonian Museum of American History. Uh, shows a rifle conversion uh, model 1842. Uh, the key differences, as I said, being the rear sight, uh, the rifle style front sight, and as we see in this photo from uh, College Hill Arsenal, who was kind enough to let me use it, uh, we've got the rifled barrel, which is a bit worn as, a, as fitting a, a weapon that's, you know, over 150 years old, and the, uh, the concave cavity that was added to the ramrod so that you wouldn't deform the, uh, the mini bullet when loading it. The uh, Model 1842 remained in service throughout the American Sengoku period. Parts were procured for the muskets for as late into the war as 1864. Uh, it's important to note that this is the last Charleville derivative that the U.S. ever produced. Uh, but, and so, as we say goodbye to the smoothbore musket, we look forward to the, uh, to the introduction of rifled muskets, and that will be, not next episode, next episode will be devoted to the uh, percussion conversions, but soon. I hope you enjoyed this episode of McNally's Musket Missive. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe all of my ep Like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel to help drive the algorithm. Also, if you haven't already, please consider, uh, Please consider uh, supporting me on Patreon, and I want to thank all of my supporters up to this point. You guys really do make this possible. Uh, so that's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Bye.